I'm going to start a support group for people like me where I could say, hi, my name is Tom. I used to be Italian, <laughs> right? Now you're Italian. <laughs> and everyone could be like, good, ciao, Chris. Tom. That's the way it felt when I was like, you know, getting to know her and hanging out and everything. Listen, this is a grown up Italian podcast where, as you can see, we're talking about family. We got a family member with us today, Tom Galati. Wanna be millennial. millennial. Yeah. <laughs> My Instagram is wanna be millennial. Um, it's and, funny how you spell it though. Underscore. B. Right. Well, I'll just tell you, I was, I'm in advertising. That's my, my day job. And I started doing the comedy recently, mm -hmm. but I had people on my team that were like, all oh, millennials. I was managing a team of people selling advertising. Mm -hmm. And I was like, always questioning what they were doing. Like now they're having like, uh, the uh, Kumba Chumba tea. What was it? What was the big thing with like kombucha? Kombucha. Kombucha. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I'm like, all right, tell me about this kombucha. And like all these millennial trends at the time is going back a, a few years. <laughs> And I'm like, you know what? I said, I want to be a millennial. I'm like, you guys got it right. You're always coming in with your mm -hmm. iced coffee and you're always whatever. So uh, so when I just started having like an Instagram account, I was like, all right, I'm the want to be millennial yeah, now. Yeah, I said, yeah. I'm older than you guys, but I want to embrace what's going on right now. So you want people to look at you and say, oh, that's the want to be millennial? That's a lot you to say what? in one, one It minute. is. You know what's funny? Like, well, I, feel like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should probably, now that I'm trying to move forward with the comedy and everything yeah. and, and build it, might it up. It might be time to Galati, might, Tom Galati. Galati comedy. Tom Galati, yeah, exactly. Galati, Galati comedy. comedy would probably be That's actually Galati nice, comedy, yeah. oh. That's a nice ring to it. You heard it here first on the Throwing <laughs> yeah. Italian podcast. Listen, so. we don't know what his Instagram is right now. It will be <laughs> in the you description. What it will be. Yeah. So it we, will be in the description, whatever right. it is. But yeah. Tom, I mean, how long have you been in the family now? So we were just saying that, like, Javon and I are married. So my wife is first cousins with, with these with guys our, here. With our parents, no? No. no you, your, our, your, your wife's mom. Your mother. And our mom. And are, your father. Our, cousins. our first cousins. Right. So Wait, your mother and your father. <laughs> the family tree. Boom, 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 boom. We map it out. Your mother, your father, first cousins with my mother-in-law. Correct. So technically, I guess you guys and my wife are like second third. cousins or something. I think it's third cousins twice once, removed. Once removed. removed. Once removed. Once right. removed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so what does that make us? What, whatever. <laughs> We're definitely Bizons right. at the end of definitely. the day. At the end of the day, right? So I'm married to Giovanna 18 years. I'm with her, I guess, about 23, 25 years, something like that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we met in college. We were sitting together in a class. Where did you guys go in college? Uh, SUNY Old Westbury. Okay. Oh, so nice, I was nice. getting my bachelor's degree there. She was just starting out. She went on to get her uh, master's um, at Stony Brook, and she, you know, teaches Italian now. So um, when I first met you guys, I'm like third generation Italian, but I was like, I'm like all in because like I'm the youngest of all the cousins on my family. So I kind of watched all this happening. Yeah. But the only people that were speaking Italian were my grandparents when they didn't want anyone to understand what they were saying. They wanted <laughs> everyone else to speak English. So yeah. we could hurry up and assimilate and become Americans. Right, right, right. So they would speak Italian to each other. And when we would ask what they were saying, we never knew. You know, and they did the same thing with my father. Yeah. My father understands Italian, but never mm -hmm. spoke it. It's, it's very funny because, you know, we run the page growing up Italian. But when I think of family like Giovanna's, I'm like, they're more Italian than us. Yeah. Because they like yeah. speak Italian to they the They do all, all the homemade right. traditions. Like we don't make homemade wine or anything like that. It's funny. There's a few things that when I talk about my in-laws, you know, Giovanna mm -hmm. and her, her brothers and sister, there's a lot of things we want to carry on. You know what I mean? Like especially the sauce and the wine. Yeah. I feel mm -hmm. like I love homemade wine. Do you guys like it? Do you guys it's a little, it? it's a little, little strong it's for little my liking. Strong. It's a little strong. You gotta mix it with a little, you know, a little seven up, a little ginger ale. <laughs> right, right. You get banged out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you guys probably started drinking that at what twelve at the table. Yeah, yeah like a little Christmas bit. Eve and Easter they were just they were trying to put some hair on our chest. Yeah. You know? <laughs> It's yeah. all right. It is good. Don't worry right, about right. it. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to It's organic. <laughs> so being that like, okay, you're third generation, you meet a super, super Italian girl. How's the pressure of like, when you're introduced to the family and they're off the boat. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Yeah. Very little, yeah. very little English. And here you are like, oh man, like, was it? Was this something that you were like concerned about in the beginning? Like, you know, I hope I hope they like me. You know, like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good first impression. Well, it's funny because I felt like I wanted to learn Italian because I knew they were talking about me, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying in a bad way, but I knew mm -hmm. they were talking about yeah, me. Yeah. It turns out it was a lot of good stuff, but 
I kept trying to learn. They never said Ki Se Shem, right? Baba Merigan. That I know, right, right. Ki Ki Equis Se Shem, right? We'll cut them some slack. They definitely said some bad things too. So they probably said a lot of bad things about me. I don't know. But I wanted to know what they were saying. And I was curious to learn because actually, like at the time, her grandmother, uh, Nona Janina, Mm -hmm. she only spoke Italian. But she was so nice to me. She treated me like one of the grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And I said, like, it's funny because I said one time to Giovanna, I said, you know, I think you're Nona. She wants me to call her Nona. So she's just, really like, she told you that? Mm-hmm. Really? That's what she said? I'm like, well, every time I go near her, she goes, oh, Bella Nona, Bella Nona. <laughs> she goes, it's nice that she's saying that, but she doesn't want you to call. She goes, you can call her Nona if you want. This is when I was getting, you know, we were serious. We yeah, were yeah. engaged. I said, you know, it's really Yeah, nice. I mean, that, that to me, if, well, I mean, she, like that she means she treated you as a grandchild. She didn't grandchild. literally say it, but like yeah. you said, it's what you're... What, like, doesn't Taylor call no, 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 yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, See, that's like yeah. a big sign of but respect. it's a sign of respect both yeah, yeah. ways, right? right? Both ways, for sure. Totally. When her grandparents were getting ready to go back to Italy, is when her, both of her grandparents were still alive, they were getting ready to go back to Italy. I used to call them like the Italian snowbirds. They would do like six months yeah. in, in Anitin, yeah. six yeah. months in That's the in, dream right there. Sano, right? That's great. So they kept going back and forth. This is when they were still in good enough health to go back and forth. Right, right. And uh, I remember I worked with a girl uh, at work who spoke Italian. She was like the same generation as you guys, and she she was fluent. But she spoke the Florentine, the proper Italian, right? Oh, God. And, you know, my in-laws, they only speak the dialect. They understand. Sassanese. The, the Sassanese, Sassanese right? dialect, too. So <laughs> Not, not a, exactly a, a common dialect. This is a true story, and I wanted to impress them, and I wanted them to show that I cared about them, and I wanted to communicate with them other than ciao, and grazie, whatever. And... I practiced a whole speech. It was like four or five sentences. Mm. She wrote it out oh, for me. Shit. And it was like... Uh, how, how long were you practicing this I practiced speech? for days. Yeah? A couple days. God, God's honest truth. And I thought, I'm like, Giovanna's going to see this and she's going to know, like, you know, she's going to say, boy, you're trying really, to blow out the water. I was yeah. really, I was going to get knock it out of the park. So uh, it was this whole thing about uh, Tante Benico. I looked forward to a lot of Benny times when you come back from Italy. I look forward to visiting Italy one day. It was this whole thing. So when I started doing it, I didn't tell Giovanna I was going to do it. But I said, you know, scusa, signora, you know, no, 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 right? The whole thing. I said it, and she was staring like she was looking right through me. Like, <laughs> when I was done, she's like, que did? Que? And I was like. Because you, you learned, you, you got the words I from. I said it perfectly, like perfect Italian. I didn't say it perfectly, but yeah. it was written out in perfect Italian. She didn't understand the fucking word. <laughs> so Giovanna's like. She's like, I don't. That's great. I'm like, does she not understand what I just said? I thought you spoke Italian. I didn't realize the main difference, yeah. you know, between the dialects. A lot Strong. of people don't know unless you're really, really in it. Right. But could you tell us like some of the <laughs> sassanese you picked up, maybe? <laughs> well, it's funny because I feel like the I I'm, I'm learning Italian through my wife speaking the, the dialect. And then she's helping me understand the proper Italian so that when we go to Italy, I know what to say. So, right. like, but when they answer the phone, I'm used to hearing my in-laws, you know, uh, how are you? And I hear her saying, like, oh, grazie, Medi. You know, like, oh, thank God everything's okay, you know? Um, well, that's, that's not real Italian. Yeah, right. Just yeah. point that out. Tam, tutto post. You know, stai buon. You know, it's always like that, that kind of stuff. And then at the end of the day, Giovanna's like, look, you don't say tutto post. You know, you'd say, you know, uh, or you don't say, like, che fac? What are you doing? It's... Que cosa fai, you know? Fai, yeah. And it's funny, like, vieni qua, vieni qua and vieni qui, right? But then when <laughs> we went... vieni qua, too, sometimes. When like, we went oh. to Sassano, we went up to San Giacomo, mm-hmm. and someone said to me, who I was introduced to, he was talking to me because I was using some of my conversational Italian. He goes, Dom, vinegar. It sounded like he said vinegar. But vieni qua, vinegar. It was like vinegar. Vinegar. You got vinegar? Yeah. Right. <laughs> it was like, Tom, vinegar. <laughs> Oh, I'm oh like, you say no, know, <laughs> no oh, olive oil. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I'm good. I'm, uh, not, I'm not hungry. So uh, you know, so it's like trying to learn. I'll 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 pick up the dialect and I'll start using it in conversation. And then Javon is always trying to correct me. Like when we've gone to Italy, we were I try and impress her too by showing her what I learned. And we go out to eat, like especially if we're in like Rome, we fly in more or Naples before you go down. And uh, we had we had lunch one day, and I said, "Scusi, il." il uh, il posto per piacere. And she's like, you just asked for the post office. Yeah, you just asked for <laughs> con- You asked for mail. Right. Yeah. But it was canto, right? If you asked for the check. Ocondo, ocondo, yeah. Ocondo, yeah, we say. So, what are you? But yeah, honestly, I just go this. I honestly, 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 honestly I, I just get on with this. Yeah, this when, is the universal, <laughs> I guess, in any it's language. It's universal, right? like, let me pay. Yeah. When it's time to what pay. About, what about tipping in Italy? Do you tip in Italy when you visit? I feel like it's the right thing to do, but then Giovanna always tells me it's included, right? So, what about you guys? Uh, I mean, I try. I tip every time, and they they sometimes they'll reject no, they, it. They, no, no, they reject I it never, straight out. 
Bro, when but, I like sometimes when it's but, exceptional but I like service, force it. Right. I force yeah. it. Though. I feel bad, bro. They, right. you don't, they don't make much. People waiting you know? on you, right? It's like you know what you know what you do. Like this is what I do when I go. I don't tip at the end. I tip in the beginning. So I'm yeah, like, smart, yeah, right. hook it up. Smart. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm like, as soon as I sit down, if I feel like they're taking care of me already or right. something, I'll be like, you know, chinga right. would right chinga there. Would chinga would. Well, you know what, talking about my father-in-law, you, you mentioned before with the wine, I picked up from him when you go to a wedding, taking care of the people that, that take care of your table. That's, 20 bucks. That's an yeah. yeah, that's, that's important. Tw- I mean, they're bringing you drinks constantly. You know what? Like, Manuj is an OG, bro. He, yeah, is he wants He wants the appetizers first. Right? <laughs> he wants the drinks right when he orders. Right. So, but I noticed that, and I even, I said to Giovanna one time, I was like, well, what's, you know, what's he doing? Like, because in my head, I'm thinking, well, the, the, the people that do the wedding, they're taking care of them. You know right. what I mean? Like, and I realize, of course, it's the right thing to do, but I'm like, you know, it's brilliant. You throw them an extra 20 bucks, they're, they're waiting on you hand and foot. They're bringing you 100 fucking Jack and Cokes at yeah, a wedding, yeah. you know? You're chilling. Yeah. You're so, chilling for us. Uh, like they don't a, go missing, you know? No, they yeah, don't you're right. Missing. Exactly. But, you know, I've been in a lot of wedding parties, especially with some of my Zios, but they usually like chip in five bucks each and then you give the guy 40, 50 bucks. Right. He's taking care of that table. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, they don't get lost after yeah. that. They're ready they to know, go. They know where, where they're And then maybe if they're really good, you give them another 20 at the end. Right. You well, know? you get them too sometimes. They're like, look, I'm not supposed to do shots, but uh, here you guys go. Right? Then, they, <laughs> yeah. then they start doing the right like, thing. Oh, they oh you, wanted, you wanted black label? I got it. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> no so, more red for no you. More Johnny Red. So right? what I want to transition into now is like how this all came about for you, how you started comedy but i feel like it came anyway. out of nowhere is what we're yeah, trying to yeah, say. Yeah. right 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 because like we never There's saw a pleasant anything. surprise though right and like, all of a sudden we see you at governor's i'm like what the <laughs> hell? Like, what yeah the? you know what you're right and it's funny because javon and i were talking about how like saying anything about you know her or the kids while i'm performing now and i said something like you know do you think sebastian maniscalco's wife is like well maybe you shouldn't say that whatever and I'm like, she said something where she goes, well, they probably met them after they made it big and they knew, okay, I'm marrying a comedian. She goes, you weren't a comedian two years ago. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So like when we have an open conversation about it, you're right, it did come out of nowhere seemingly. But I, I did comedy in my variety show at school when I was in elementary school. And I remember it was fun and I used to write down jokes from a joke book and I just had my two boys do that at their school. And it was- it They was, used daddy's jokes or no? Yeah, they used some of my jokes. Actually, <laughs> and some of them were my dad's jokes. But, you know, I always, w- I love comedy, I love stand-up, mm-hmm. and I always thought, like, yeah, maybe one day I'll do it, and it just never happened, and all of a sudden, like, you fast forward, I'm 46 years old, and I, like, had never, never did it, but I had a few people along the way saying, oh, you're really funny, you should do comedy, you really, you should try stand-up, and I always thought I would be good in a situation, like, writing for a sitcom, but maybe not doing stand-up. So then I had a friend who was out in California. He started doing stand-up. He came home for the holidays. And while he was home visiting family, he's like, oh, I'm going to do this open mic in Huntington, Crabtrees. He's like, it's two nights from now. It's Monday night. He's like, I'm going to do it. You're going to do it too. So I went up and I did three minutes cold. And uh, it was an awesome experience. Like, not everything hit. Were you nervous? I was nervous. But it was like, it's a very long three minutes yeah, when you're standing yeah, yeah. there with the mic and everyone's staring right at yeah, you. Yeah, and then it's only you. You it's don't it. have somebody There's to bounce off. Like we're ripping off each other. It makes it a lot easier. And it was certain things that I had been thinking about over, over the years. And then, of course, like, you know, you find yourself in funny situations sometimes. And now it's, it's different. So for the last two years, now I think about things and I'm constantly putting notes in my phone. Yep. Now I'm thinking about, well, how would that work in, uh, in a bit? And I feel like it's it's getting a little bit easier now versus th- creating something out of the clear blue sky versus when you think about it through that lens. Right. Like I'm sure Once with you get you, some experience. Right. Yeah. Like I'm sure with you guys, you know, like uh, you think about things like, Oh, how could that be good content for what, you know, what you guys are All building time. here. Right. All yeah. time. And I, now I'm starting to think about things like, for example, um, my boys, I have twin boys that mm-hmm. are uh, eight years old and every year around their birthday time, my wife always says, so what theme do you want for your birthday, boys? What theme? You know, and I'm like, I had one theme growing up. It was happy birthday, Tom. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> I had one theme. It was fudgy the whale. <laughs> <laughs> right. And every year, it's whether it's Legos or superheroes, whatever. And that's cool. It's awesome. I, I like that. But my boys said, and this, we were in the car, and the boys said, oh, I want Titanic theme birthday. I'm like, they were, wa- they were reading books about it. They were watching the movie. And that's a hard one to do. It is. So I'm looking you at your, Jack, uh, Jack and Rose the, <laughs> on, on the, on the, on the door floating on a raft. So I was at to Giovanna and I, I was in a comedy contest at the time at governor's and uh, we would, uh, I was making, I made it to the finals, which was really cool. And I was thinking of what, what can I mix up and change or build upon? And we're in the car and I turned to Giovanna. I'm like, this is part of my next bit. 
And I said, well, how could we do? And I said, first of all, I needed to think of something where I said, can you guys think of something more upbeat? I said, like Hurricane Sandy. I was thinking of like, what could you say right. that wouldn't be natural so natural disaster? Right, a natural <laughs> disaster that's, you know, terrible for an eight year old birthday party. So finally I said, you know what? I'm just going to fill the pool with ice. I'm going to cut a hole in the raft and wish him a happy birthday. And that's it, you know? But like, that's now funny. I good find enough. Them, good enough. It was good enough, right? When are their birthdays? In the winter? Uh, September. So it's oh, just, just, just the there. The just there. So like, that was, that was the theme that we were thinking of. But like, I feel like now when I'm in situations, I'm constantly thinking about, well, how could I use that? Or right. is it something I can use? Or, um, you know, and a lot of it is, you know, jokes about being married or jokes about the kids and, um, you know, I, personal I, things, right? Exactly. Yeah. And well, I, yeah, but it's relatable, you right. know. Right. And some of your jokes, I was I was like hawking your TikTok the other day. I was just going through them, and like you're mentioning like the sex life and stuff like that. Right. So it, it's just funny being Giovanna's cousin. I'm like, right. it's like a little <laughs> uneasy for me, right? Right. <laughs> but but well, at the end of the day, it's comedy. You know right, what I mean? Exactly. But I also make sex jokes about every day. That's ninety <laughs> yeah, percent of our dialogue. <laughs> right, right. It's also you, though. You <laughs> want bastard? Either sex jokes or fart jokes yeah. or something, right? I mean, that's but, like. Like let's say you sit in a business meeting and let's say you sit down and you fart and everybody laughs. Right, right. It's universal. It's like right. there's certain things that just everybody understands. And right. Sex, farting, and yeah. So the food that, is everything. Right, you know? right. It's universal. The thing that I thought about, and actually this worked out during the finals of the comedy contest I was in, when I said, you know, sex changes. I said first I, I led into it and I said, you know, everything changes when you're married. I said, you know, sex mm -hmm. changes when you're right. married. You know, that it's like you know when you're young and single, you have sex because it's fun and it's exciting. I said, when you get married, you have sex because it's your birthday. You know what I mean? It's like, and that's literally how, it, uh, you yeah. know. Someone in the crowd was like, oh, it's my birthday <laughs> the guy, tomorrow. The guy yells out in the crowd. It was almost like I planted him there. And I think it helped me because, you know, we're getting graded. It was like mm -hmm. stage presence, original content, whatever, being yeah. able to handle the crowd. So a guy yells out, it's my birthday. So I was like, hey, this guy's getting late tonight. Yeah, you that's know? fun. The whole crowd was going So bananas. yeah, the crowd went crazy. And uh, so, but it's like, you know, trying to mix some of that, that stuff in about, you know, what it's like when you're married a long time. Right, and, you know, right, right. And, I, and a lot of it too is, it's not always exactly the moment. Like sometimes you hang out with other couples and you hear like a little bit from this couple, a little bit from that couple. Mm -hmm. And you just start thinking like, well, that's just what people think married life is all about. Do you think a lot of like comedy are like made up stories though? Like exaggerated? Exactly. That's what I think. And that's the conversation I have with Giovanna sometimes where I think oftentimes it's like you get a little bit of a nugget and then it becomes an exaggeration. You right. know what I mean? Like, um, that's storytelling in general. Though, exactly. Right. right like, exactly. You, who knows like the me, real story of Jesus Christ? Right. <laughs> that's like me saying a story. Right. <laughs> that's like just, it gets you know, exaggerated. It gets exaggerated. It's a game of telephone. Right. When, it, when something happens in a, t a little town in Italy, yeah. Inga, what happened? Right, right, you what happened? Yeah, Rosa, right. Rosa went to go get water at the fountain. <laughs> right. The next person, Rosa went to see a boy and then went to the <laughs> right, fountain. Right. And then who knows by then? Exactly. And then Rosa fatu buki. <laughs> <laughs> Rosa, that's all cool. <laughs> that's how it usually goes. What, what's some of the shows you did? You did Governors? Yeah, so I've been playing Governors and actually uh, I'm, I'm doing something in Howard Beach coming up uh, April oh, nice. 15th at uh, Russo's on the Bay. I was That's asked next, to next weekend, right? Yeah, next Friday. Friday, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's actually nice because they asked me, to, um, Giovanna's coming and uh, so, you know, we got to so get to bring hang your out. Family? Yeah, nice, you nice. Know, get to bring Giovanna and it's going to so, be a big crowd, I'm assuming. It is. They're saying like 500 people. Me. So it's like coolie cell anemia? I oh, my friend invited me to oh, that, really? actually. You should go. I can, I, I I should can call, roast. I can roast you. I was just on the phone. I was just on the phone with my friend. Look at these these content creators. They think they're famous. Right, over right, there. Right. Yeah, he, he used the millennial terms though, roast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can never picture my father saying that. Not that yours right. was my father. No, no, but. I get it. No, my. You know what my kids always say now? Burn. They get yeah. each other and they go, "Oh, look at that burn, yeah. burn." <laughs> yeah. That's like their big thing now. But uh, yeah, so I got that coming up. I'm actually back at Governor's April 24th. It's a Sunday night. Um, so it's. It's cool because I feel like the more you do, you know, just like anything else, right? the more there. you do, the better you get, and then the more people want to include you. Right, right. right. Of um, course, it's exposure yeah, and exactly. ne networking. I mean, that's what made us want to invite you here because we saw some funny stuff. We're like, listen, it's family. He's funny. Yeah, no, no brainer. Yeah. No, and I really appreciate it. And this is this is a cool experience, and uh, I can't wait to grab a hero downstairs before yeah. I head home. A little FDNY action. Definitely. Either that or my go-to. I was telling your dad. My go-to when I want like a nice Italian hero, I don't go crazy with the whole Italian hero with a little mortadelle and mm -hmm. everything. I like it simple: fresh mozzarella and hot cup of coal. That's it, right? Nothing else. Oil and vinegar. vinegar that's Oil it. Oil and vinegar. Yeah. I don't need I, to be like the cucine and say oh, it's basically a salad if you put a little. <laughs> I yeah. like 
I like my mozzarella, hot cup of coal, oil and vinegar. You're good nice to go. semolina bread. A lot of people are like that, though, with sandwiches. Go, well, you go in Italy, crazy. that's all they want. Right, yeah. right. They keep it like simple. People, right? Like, a lot of old school Italians don't put less in tomatoes and arugula in, in sandwiches. Like, they don't believe in that. Yeah. They like, they'll make a salad on the side right. instead. You know, even, uh, I know I'm, I'm probably going to get crucified for this with your audience, but roasted peppers? No. I'm not a big fan. Overrated? Oh. Overrated. Ah. Homemade roasted peppers had different though. Yeah, like the ones that are like really, Omar Maria. If she's right. making roasted peppers, right. come on, it is different. Like, but when you actually put a whole pepper and you roast it, and it's all black on outside, and you peel it off, and you, then you clean it, and you put it in some oil with some seasoning and everything. Yeah, yeah, that hits crazy. Yeah, I like my mother-in-law takes the peppers that she grows in the gardens and then just roast them in the pan. Yeah, and they just you know they get crunchy and they break, and you eat that with a little pasta. Yes, or, yes, absolutely. I love that. So good. Those are the best kind of lunches. The like I call them outside sandwiches, where you have a little um, super sauce, sausage, a little cheese, olives, a little salad, a little this, a little you just that. Yeah. Build your and own. You yeah. make your own sandwiches. Yeah. You have a sandwich and then a little bit of this, a little eggplant, a little roast. Pepper. I'll tell you one thing though. There's nothing better than a sandwich that's made for you. When you when you make your own sandwich, it doesn't taste yeah, as good as right. if your mom makes it or whoever else makes it, right? Yeah, I don't know true. what the hell the the science behind right, it is, or true. maybe it's, it's like mental, a mental right. thing. But if I'm making uh, prosciutto and fresh mozzarella on a hero, it does not taste the same thing with my mom. She can literally be the same ingredients, and it'll just taste different to me. That's true. But speaking of overrated, like Sabino mentioned earlier, with the roasted peppers, right. or that Tom was saying, they're a little overrated. Right. Let's transition into the next segment of the podcast: overrated, underrated. Or perfectly rated, Tom. Homemade sauce. Homemade sauce. I say it's, in my opinion, it's perfectly rated, because I mean it. It, it is what it's. It says what it does and mm-hmm. does what it says. You know what I mean? It's like it tastes awesome. At least but the way we, the way we make it with my my wife's family. Mm-hmm. I think it's perfectly rated. Uh, yeah, I, I agree, you agree with you. I you, mean, say, you guys mean like the sauce in a jar, and then you make it not like a, a homemade sauce. For pasta, right? I'm you saying mean, like jarring your tomato sauce yeah, every yeah, September, yeah. you know, right after, so, uh, right after Labor Day weekend. Right, right. So the Italian right. traditions, yeah, that's yeah. what I was referring to. I'd say perfectly rated. Yeah. No, I mean, everybody knows that the baseline is that it's going to taste amazing. Right. Right? I mean. Right. The only I, problem is a lot of work. Definitely. Yeah. You didn't, <laughs> so, you didn't mention that part. <laughs> it's right. a lot of work. But right. usually Tom's the one it's, eating the sauce. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I like uh, to watch everybody do it. Right. I'm usually the one dipping the bread and go, hey, you guys are doing a good job over there. Let's go. Right. Make sure you, make sure you <laughs> stir it, though. You don't want them burning in there. Stir it you up. Stir it up. up. Yeah, because, like, you do it in the summertime. You got so many bushels, so many right. things. It's hot. You're sweaty. Right. Then you leave with, like, 50 jars of sauce. You're right. like, me. You know, if you think yeah. about it, it costs more to do it than just getting peeled tomatoes. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So that's why... It's, I didn't even but, think of it that way. Now, I'll, bro, appeal, appeal to me. I would still put oh, perfectly rated. I would still put perfectly rated though. <laughs> perfectly you rated. Are, you're talking us into overrated coming yeah. up soon. With, uh, <laughs> look, so look. So we're talking about the process. The, the process is overrated. The tradition is underrated. Um, the yeah, product I'm, overall, perfectly, perfectly rated. Hundred percent. Right in the middle. You, just, you summed it all up. So all right. Man. So next up, we have homemade wine. In my opinion, and this might not be the popular opinion, I think it's underrated. Okay. Because to me, there's nothing better now after being around your family and my wife's family, all connected. I think you sit down with some like fresh pasta, like you sell downstairs, the Sapporo mm-hmm. Davalo, yeah. the, the Sassano pasta, that's, right? That's, that's our boys. That's, right? Huntington squad. I feel like you you have that, like some fresh pasta with some fresh sauce on top and a great meal like that. And to me, sipping some, some homemade wine. To wash wine, it down? I think it's underrated. See, the problem with homemade wine to me that thing will smack you like a truck. Like, out of nowhere, you just right. get blasted. Yeah. yeah. Yo, this that, is a little fun fact about homemade wine. Anybody who makes homemade wine doesn't go one day without saying that they make homemade oh, wine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's right. so true. It's like, they, like, everywhere they go. You got to try my wine. This is the best. This is the best. Right, right. This is the best. It's like, people that make their homemade wine, like, it's also, like, a way to kind of, like, connect with people like right. they yeah, gotta yeah. bring the homemade wine wherever they right. go right right you right know, but it's kind of like when you're running a marathon they say the actual running the marathon is 15 yeah. percent. Mm-hmm. the 85 percent is talking about it and sharing yeah. it on social i'm training i'm yeah, five yeah. miles in you know it's like 85 percent is fucking talking about it and 15 yeah. percent is actually right. just running the marathon. well fun right. fun story about you know what sabina was saying to, to to go off of that when we're having carmine's wine we'll say magister monucci brand Right. Like Manucci's right. brand of right. wine, because right. yeah. we know that's the good stuff. Right. Yeah. Like, and we'll even say like, "Oh, me, me, this tastes good." Like, it's like Manucci brand. Right. You know what I mean? Nice. That's yeah. so. Yeah. But it's but, cool. But You're they right. also like Long Island. The 
the Long Island Huntington Italians, they go very hard and keep the traditions, man. Yeah, I respect they, it. They do. The, especially in Long Island in general, too. Yeah. A lot of them trying and to hold on to It's also because you guys got the space. You got the space. Right, not like right, here, bro. The garage space. A little bored, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, there's not much <laughs> going on. The process of the wines, too, it could be a little gross, no? You jump in the... The, the no, bucket. No, no. <laughs> nobody, nobody does that. See, nobody we never did it, so right. Nono used to do it, but we, we weren't around. For when I used to play part. basketball in CYO, you used to call me the winemaker. Why? Because I have flat feet. And oh. like that. <laughs> so you're like, you stomp your feet like you're making wine. Oh, that's but great. everybody usually puts it in, um, I, forget what it's, I forget what it's called, but. The, the demijohn. Oh, the, yeah, that thing that you're the wooden crate yeah. crushes it down. Yeah. You got to do it three, right. two, three times. Right. Yeah. Imagine know? years ago, they had all these inventions. Right. My God. But even like the pasta now, when you make the sauce or when you do that, like it's so much easier with all the elect- uh, the, the mm-hmm. mechanical parts. But yeah. back in Sassano, yeah. you know, they would do yeah. it all, all the that shit were like that. It's crazy, right? I know. When game, you think about game changers. That? A lot of but game changers. But honestly, changes. I got to be honest, it tastes better, especially homemade pasta when it's, you know. When it's done by hand. All right. So the next one, homemade sausage. I think I'm going to say uh, underrated. Because I feel like there's that freshness, kind of like when someone goes to Italy mm-hmm. and they come back with some some fresh stuff that's maybe mm-hmm. hidden in a little kachkavan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something about the fresh sausage, mm-hmm. like, you know, I, I'm going to go underrated. That's not unmatched to I'm me. going underrated, too. We just had, like, homemade sausage yesterday, so too, that Nanda made. I'm yeah. pretty sure some one of us made it. And I was actually talking about it. Now, everybody talks about homemade supresad, but for us... We always had homemade sausage. Yeah. We didn't make a lot of homemade supresad. We made more. No, it was sour definitely tea. sausage. You know, in the zonia, like vacuum sealed. Yeah, right. Like when I would go to summers in Italy, like my nonna would have 50 sausages ready to go, you know? And it's different because I feel like when I've had the homemade stuff, I've never made it. I've made the wine, I've made the sauce, I never made the sausage. Mm-hmm. I'd be curious to, to you know, to, to try it. But when you get, even at a good you know, even at a good good place that you're getting, uh, like you said, soplasad or something, even if it's good and fresh, it's still a little dry inside. But right. I feel like when you get it, the homemade one, it's like, you know, it's like soft inside. But that's that's bit. my problem with the homemade sausage. I'll see it hanging. I'll see it curing. I'm like, oh, is it ready? Eh, let's cut it open. A little early. I cut it open. And it's, a piece. No, my nonna's like freaking out. Oh, it's, it's an egg It's, it's a little raw done. inside. Right. That's when it's like, the best, That's how though. I like it, though, you know? That's when it's the best, bro. <laughs> so Actually, but, sometimes even like when it's only curing, Two three weeks, they will like put it like in the fire in Italy, like and cook it a little bit. Yeah, just yeah, so little. good, like a frittata, right? Yeah, but oh, it's like so banging. a little like the outside is starting to dry up, and then just the inside cooks. Oh man! I'll tell you one thing though: the homemade sausage. The process is frustrating. Like I, that's something that I've done almost every year of my life with, with my parents All the steps and, and the thing. And it's it's hard because when it's coming out of the machine and you have the you know the intestine that it's going right. into, sometimes the intestine will break. Yeah, and then you have to like patch it up and then do it all over again. Bro, and then poke that's it. not it's even a, that a long bad process. Considering in Italy they actually kill the thing. Yeah, yeah. They well, kill the pig, right? And then you know, yeah, you get we're, we're starting. We're starting at step three. In yeah, Italy, yeah, it's right, like, you're right. talking about buying some right. raw sausage meat and, <laughs> right, and just skinning right. it. Right. That's bare easy. Right. right. And listen, they didn't do this for fun. This is literally their food supply and it's tradition, sausage. Yeah. Yeah. Sausage could be good for a while too. So where we come from is like. Let's say you have three or four pigs and you kill two, three of them. It's literally food for the winter. Oh, yeah, that's right. how you that's stock literally up. Literally, what it and is. Also, with the you know with the Italians too, is like nothing went to waste. Right? Absolutely that's not. Like yeah. the sangonach and everything. Yep. Like oh nothing, my god. Which I have no interest. I have in, nightmare stories about that. <laughs> but have like, you ever tried sangonach? Like I, I actual, tried it. like you like actual it? sangonach. You know what's funny? I feel like some of this stuff, like the sangonach, I tried in Huntington uh-huh. and with. Your your dad brought it uh, brought it out or something I think okay and what was the sounds other like thing? something Zio would have um, <laughs> what was the other thing too with like the, the pig snout that's like with the lemon like in Sassano. oh mousse de porc mousse de porc that was and the my family brought that to you I had that there and what I think the? I had that uh, with the sangonach <laughs> bro don't act shocked what a combination <laughs> don't act shocked oh come maybe come not in the same meal come to eat Tom, something come here. you ever eat, <laughs> you ever eat <laughs> this shit right yes last Sunday my nonna came by my house I had the little ones my mom's frying chicken cutlets and she's boiling brain. And I'm like, a tale of two Italian stories. <laughs> yeah, that's I didn't even opposite. post it. I was like, it's just it's, crazy. Yeah, it's a lot. We yeah. really... Two extremities. Yeah. No, one extremity and one normal <laughs> food. The, one, the time yeah. I realized that Italy was different than us in food was when, you know, I grew up in a sandwich shop in Brooklyn and you visit Italy in the summer 
Like, no, no, he wore your polo, chicken cotelette, right? And then all of a sudden, she goes to the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, she makes chicken color and it's like a bone inside. Right, right. You know, she's not a professional butcher. Right, right. Then I was like, yeah, I don't want chicken color anymore. I'm good. <laughs> like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Growing, up, we all, a pasta? Yeah. growing up, we all had a pet rabbit at some point. And, and one, one, one day, the one day especially around Easter time, he ran away. <laughs> he ran away. Uguni, I do you. Where's Tommy? No, no, do it, Tommy. No, no, so. But I'm on just some chicken. This is chicken tonight. Right, just eat it. We're having chicken. Why does it taste a little different? It's a little oily. It's a little different, right? That's so great. Then you see the thing's freaking head. <laughs> oh, my God. That's great. You're a Long Island guy. Grew up there pretty much, right? Yeah. Moved there at a young age. Overrated, underrated, perfectly rated. All right, we're doing Long Island edition? Yeah, Long Island right. edition. Okay. Suffolk. I say Suffolk County is underrated. And what I say, I feel like I grew up in Nassau County. I grew up in Hicksville, and now I live in Northport. And I feel like there's a lot of cool parts of Suffolk County that mm-hmm. maybe people don't know about. So I'm going to say Suffolk County is, is underrated, especially when you think of, like, parts of the North Fork. You know, I know it's separate when we talk a little bit about the East End, but uh, there's some really cool spots along the North Shore. Um, in Suffolk County, especially that uh, that I really like. Nassau, Nassau, I think is. Uh, I'm, I'm you know, you want to say it. You could say it. I'm gonna say overrated. Mm. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm. You know, maybe I'm hurting my Long Island crowd here a little bit. But boo. I feel like <laughs> next show, boo. <laughs> right. Who brought this guy? I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the show and be like, hey, it's weird. I, I, my followers went down after coming and going up the diet. It's weird. I don't know. But those guys must have fake followers. <laughs> maybe it's because now I'm living in Suffolk County and I feel like I have a little more space. And then I feel like it's just we, very far from the city. Right. That's the that's a bad part. But even though when I was commuting, I commuted into the city for like 15 years before COVID, mm-hmm. and just about an hour on the train. So it's really not that bad. All in, my, my commute was an hour and a half. Everybody Honestly. from Long Island always says, it's not that bad. Right, it's not, not that, that bad. bad. It's only an hour 45 that's gonna minutes. Be, that's going to be me right? one day. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not too bad. With no, yeah. with no traffic, it's an hour 30. It's not that bad. <laughs> right. All right. So I'm going to say overrated for NASA. Um, what about uh, All Way Out East edition? We got the North Fork. So I'm going to kind of break it into, I'm going to say North Fork is underrated because if you spend some time out there, you go to the wineries. Um, there's some a really cool town with Greenport. Yes. That's not too yes. far. You know, like, um, I'm going to say North Fork is underrated. Well, how about the South? South Fork is overrated. Mm, why? It's more expensive, right? Like it's more expensive. And I feel like, you know, the North Fork, people say the North Fork is going to turn into the South Fork because yeah. all the city people are buying out there. Yeah. And now that you're getting trendier spots out. In the more space. Fork. Money team right, right there. Right. <laughs> But I think the South Fork is overrated because it's like, oh, I'm going to the Hamptons, the Hamptons, and Courtney and Chloe take the Hamptons and all this shit. I feel like, I think to me, the Hamptons are, are overrated. Yeah, I would agree with that. Fair point. So, Tom, what's next for you? What, what do you like? Where do you see this going? Honestly speaking. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate that because uh, that's actually the question my wife asked me every <laughs> night. <laughs> like, and what was is, your reaction <laughs> to saying that you were going to come on the pod? Well, it's funny because I floated it out there because I didn't know if she was going to be like, uh, oh, that's good. You should go do it, which yeah. is what she said. Or if she was going to be like, well, that's a little too close for comfort. You know what I mean? Right, like right. maybe worried about what I would say and whatever. Yeah. So uh, she was very, very supportive. And I think she wor- she thinks the world of you guys, which is really cool. And that helps a lot. And, you know, her being an Italian teacher, I think she loves the fact that she hates the fact that they talk about how many people are speaking English in Italy versus carrying on the language or how yes, many school yeah. districts don't even teach Italian anymore. She's always been a huge advocate for that. Totally, 100%. And so at her classroom, when I came in here and I'm looking at this place, I'm like, I'm like, I have to show you guys pictures of her classroom because she embraces the culture so much. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Ms. Galati's yes. uh, yeah. Italian class. Right, definitely. So um, what I will say, though, is so now I'm trying to grow my, my TikTok follower base by taking my routines, um, you know, my comedy routines, which are usually about 10 minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to put that into like two minute clips or minute and a half clips. The only thing is on once TikTok. you put on the Internet, you don't use that bit anymore, right? Yeah, it's going to be hard. Yeah, it's hard, right? Because then when people come to see you, then like, oh, yeah, I heard that. I heard shit, that right? already. Yeah. yeah. I feel like the good comedians, though, if they have like one or two good bits, then always like, oh, do the bit about your DNA yeah, or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah. and like they want maybe that one bit. But then. You know, like Sebastian, I think he does a good job of changing up his material yeah, a lot. Mm-hmm. And um, I've always loved Chris Rock, not because of what's going on right now, not to get <laughs> political. Because he got schmacked. Right. Right. <laughs> but I've always loved his stand-up. Yeah. And it just amazes me when someone could be that funny and just put together an hour, hour and a half to do another Netflix special mm-hmm. or something or HBO specials before Netflix was big. Um, so I'd like to continue to do it. 
I, for this point, I'm keeping my day job. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I gotta gotta put food on the table. Of course, and then, yeah. You know, you gotta you got build beautiful it up kids slow. to feed. Exactly. So I'd like to continue to keep doing it. Um, I love doing the shows at Gov- uh, Governors and some other mm-hmm. clubs and doing this uh, charity event coming up. Um, it's a fun, creative outlet for me. You know what I mean? I, I really sure. enjoy Everybody it. Everybody needs that. Everybody needs yeah, that. Yeah, totally. And like I said, now that I'm thinking about things, like when I, uh, we, we talked a little bit, I'm not 100% Italian and I'm like third generation, but when I did my DNA test through Ancestry, it was like a big surprise to me to find out I'm more uh, Irish than Italian. Oh, wow. On my DNA. Yeah, yeah. So I turned that into a bit where I said, you know, I kind of feel like I've been living a lie. You know, I feel like, <laughs> you know, everything's been, you know, everything's been fake to me. So I feel like I'm going to start a. I think I don't even believe in those DNA things, man. It all, so? it all depends. Like, all right, let's say just you know before we close this out, let's say somebody was adopted by two Italian parents, and right? They and grew, you grew up, up Italian, eating tripe I mean, that's, and everything, and making wine and sauce. Who's, who's to say they're not Italian? Right. right. Like we, that's what this page is all about: is to let you learn more right. and bars. You know. Yeah. So it's funny. I'll tell you guys that I was surprised to learn that. And I said, I'm going to start a support group for people like me where I could say, hi, my name is Tom. I used to be Italian, <laughs> right? Now you're Italian. <laughs> and everyone could be like, good, ciao, Chris. Tom. You know, I could have a support group. Maybe a teacher. You're Italian by, uh, <laughs> by, by homemade Listen, wine. You, know? you, you grew up, well, you were born in one of the hearts of the most Italian neighborhoods in all of the United right. States. Born so. in Bensonhurst. And that's the funny thing to me. And that's what I wanted to tell you guys. Even the Irish side of my family was in Bensonhurst. You know, I even the Irish side of my family felt Italian to me. You know, like right. there was Cusimano and Son's funeral mm-hmm. home. Yeah. And my grandmother actually said to me, this is a funny story too. My grandmother said to me, she goes, Tom, when I pass, I was like 16 years old. She goes, I don't want to be laid out at Cusimano and Son's funeral home. She goes, that's where all the mobsters get laid out. That was oh, what she wow. said to me, right? Because <laughs> wow. every time you drove by there, it was all uh, Lincolns and Cadillacs, double and triple parked, right? <laughs> oh my God. So I'm like, all right, Grandma. Meanwhile, I'm 16. Like, I'm gonna, I'm worried about, you know, like the Italians. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in 100 years, right? Right, right. So, so the Jindan, the Frajindan. Fast forward. Now I'm like early 20s. My grandmother passes away. Um, and we're out on Long Island at that point because she was in like an assisted living place and everything. And the limousine driver pulls my dad and me on the side and he says, listen, I'm not from around here, but how do we get back to Long Island Expressway when we leave the church to go to the cemetery? So my dad's explaining, you go here, you make a right. He says, you know, I'm from Brooklyn. So my dad says, well, I'm from Brooklyn. My you know, mother who, mm-hmm. mother-in-law who passed is from Brooklyn. So he says, yeah, he says, I'm from Bensonhurst. I'm from Cusimano and Sons. So he says, you know, it was like a cool sign oh, from my right, grandmother right. and she would have gotten a kick out of it. But she was like, I don't want to be, I don't want to go over That's there. That's so you know? funny. It was wow. just funny. It was like right down way, way to make a comical yeah. moment out of that too. Right, exactly. And we laughed about it because that's that's what she said. But like I said, I grew up thinking even my Irish side was Italian. Mm-hmm. So like now I'm having fun with it and including that in my uh, in my bit, in my routine, yeah. you know. From our cousin to now comedian, Tom, we wish you the best of luck. You know, the sky's the limit. Hit the description and find him on all socials. Yes. Yeah, we don't awesome. know what we don't know what he's gonna call himself. <laughs> but on TikTok though, I'm either Tom Galati, G A L A T I, or Maxin two four seven. Maybe I gotta change that too. But I did that when I yeah, first opened I it before I started. We doing might have it. to change it right after this podcast. But take it easy, everybody. Thanks so much for having me on, guys. Anytime, bro.